view natin sa market. So, yung type of shifting tides kasi parang in the next few years, parang dami nagbabago eh. So, in terms of cycle, in terms of dati yung Fed, di ba? Parang zero interest rates. Di ba? Kaya super low ng volatility kasi every time magkapabalim yung market, oh, dyan yung Fed ulit. Di ba? So, this time, in the rate shift, wala na yung Fed. Kasi patayitan na yung liquidity ng market. Yeah, shifting tights. So, I have this artwork. <laughs> it's the Great Wave of Kanagawa. Kasi, hindi yung Mount Fuji eh. Sobrang late niya lang. Tapos yung wave mo sobrang laki. So, actually, sobrang sikat ng painting na ito eh. The emotional power eh. Alright, okay, so first, if you look at the US, booming pa rin siya. Love. I think forecast for second half, uh, second quarter is three percent. So, for the past so many quarters since 2009, the growth rate ng US was only 2.2 percent ng average. But now, three percent siya. So obviously, booming now in US. So cyclical strength driven by uh, mostly by Trump, tax reform, and then you. After the tax reform, meron pa lang fiscal stimulus package. Hindi pa, hindi pa na-execute yun eh. So, yung plan natin nila is for the government to fund only 20% of that. And then yung private equity sector daw, nag-raise ng $1 trillion to fund that info project, if ever, ito ulit nito. So, parang may bahala pa siya. So, ito leading to the next election, 2019 uh, And then, if you look, look at yung data na para po, Okay, inflation. So, any measure of inflation you look at, it's already above two percent. And two percent yung target ng Fed. Tapos, ito may emergency. So, it's a little bit of indicator. This one, it's supposed to be a leading indicator of inflation. So, this one is already at three percent now. So, para sa mga inflation, pa to three percent. Uh, then if you look at the wages, it's already going up now. So the past two months, 2.6%, 2.7% in wage growth. So it's already an uptrend. So of course, you inflation and lucky effect on wages, especially in the US. Okay, then if you look at investments, pasipa rin siya, investment growth, thanks to the tax reform. And of course, you share by about then. Share buyback, all-time high shot. That last quarter. Up 42% year on year, and it's 10% higher than the previous record in 2007, just before the crisis. So up 10% shot from there. So, so we're, we're in that part of the cycle where it's high growth, high inflation. But the good news is, well, uh, good news, wala pang overheating yung economy in the US. So, our point is that it's good. Our point is that it's good. Yeah, yeah. You're the part of the game. <laughs> but, wala pa rin overheating kasi itong chart na ito pinapakit uh, there's 95 million people that are out of the labor force so one out of three Americans out of the labor force the internal bank kaya kahit yung high labor market walang overheating kasi dami talaga dami people walang trabaho If you look at US relative to Japan, Europe, or anywhere in the world, relatively little in the US economy. 
So what, what they're saying is that the export growth is going to grow faster than the import growth. So talaga may major source of demand in the US. Which is, ganun naman talaga kasi world's biggest consumer sila. So most likely sila yung power ng uh, global economy. And of course, it's also going to lead to a larger trade deficit going forward. So I don't try to do it. It's inverse, inverse shape. The Pumawa by speed na malaki yung trade deficit. Actually, the Pumawa by speed is to light. So, and so tapos in US. So, if you look at the rest of the world, okay pa rin eh. Healthy on all indicators. Diba? Itong PMA kasi, if, if it's about 50, it's expansion. Diba? So, past few years, ang sasparali yung growth ng manufacturing side of the global economy. Ngayon, mag nasasolid siya ng expansion. Diba? So, siya sabi nila, we slow down now. No? Pero, it's still way above 50. Diba? Para it's just normalizing. Kasi yung last year ko yung sobrang yung lakas ng numbers. It's white eh. Because of the background. So, this right side, ito yung Asia Manufacturing PMA. It's still solid siya above 50. But if you look at the past few years, you know, it's consistently below the 50 level. So, all indicators, healthy pa rin. Uh, this chart is uh, world trade growth. So, if you look at the past few years, wala, patay. But now, it's solidly expanding. But even anywhere. Tapos, yun. So, when I say it's number of countries in recession, I mean, it's 10 or 20 year low. So, it's parang synchronized global growth. Pero uneven pa rin, led by the US. But on the Trump, of course, it's not gonna die down soon. <laughs> Kasi yung, it's more than trade for the US eh. It's a fight for parang global dominance eh. Pag gusto namin, kayo yung number one dito. Okay? So, what you want to do, harangin namin. Diba? And China's made it very obvious na yung gusto nila gawin is upgrade their economy. Made in China 2025. Kasi what's happening to China is, parang they're losing their place in the global manufacturing. Kasi yung labor nila sobrang mahal eh. Diba? So you can't fight those uh, Vietnam, uh, Thailand, Malaysia. You can't compete anymore. Uh, ang problema, hindi uh, na sila makakumpit sa likes of Europe, uh, Japan, US. Kasi behind sila sa technology and productivity. So they really need this uh, Made in China 2020. And pagtingnan mo, kinakaroon na lahat ng US yung technology side. Pero yung may analysis of this is that China will give way. Dapat. Kasi, Lack of advantage in the USA. Eh. So they have all the technology. Ka wala ka China. You're behind. You need me. Diba? And then yung, yung trade deficit ng, ng US is. Yung exports ng China sa US is 500 plus billion. So this is China. So this is the amount of China exports to the. U.S. Kasi hindi kumikita sila 500 million. Yung U.S. exports sila sa China. 100 billion lang. Diba? So, kung sabihin na China, okay, tarik tayo dito. Sa sabihin ng U.S., so what? It's only 100 billion. It's an 80 trillion economy. So, walang walang effect sa kanila. Diba? Pero kung sabihin ng U.S., kung tarik tayo dito, oh, nasaktan yung China. So, parang tagili din. It's, it's asymmetrical. Pero also on China's part, the export to the U.S. is also much less modest than China. So, it's not the U.S. exports to the U.S. Mas I guess ito, most importantly for emerging markets, ito yung correlation ng world trade volume and commodity prices. So it's very correlated though. So if you're in world trade, you're not going to be prices. You're not going to be emerging markets. So the only risk they're saying is that if the trade war is good, then US, Europe, and China put, ta put tariffs on whatever they you know, export and import. It's going to be global trade 6%. 6% is the growth rate. So it's going to be easy. <laughs> 
And tama si Dennis, actually biggest trade partner ng China is Europe. In Asia, tama. Okay, so, okay, next. So, I think this is a very important shift in the macro going forward. Is that tapos ni yung seven years of zero, zero interest rates and QE. Because in the past seven years, there have been liquidity na bumuo sa mundo eh. Yeah, but now, tapos na yun. So, the Fed funds rate is now at 2%. They plan to end it at in 2018, 2.5% down. Then long term, 3.25, 3.5. Diba? So at least ito, parang may, may balay yung US Fed. Para pag slow down, they can do something. Pero yung BOJ, pati yung ECB, kasi wala silang bala. Kasi so, until now, zero pa rin yung interest rates. So uh, this is the reason kaya dala nung gusto mag-normalize ng Fed. Eh. So, and then this is the balance sheet of the Fed. So, this is 2007, so only less than 1 billion. Burden QE, we need 4.5 trillion dollars. So, it's been the high tide to the global markets. Na so, we have pera, liquidity going to the markets, pushing up everything and anything in the markets. So, yeah, it's set to unwind. So, with liquidity going forward, it's going So, I think this is really significant. Kasi dati, let's say you're having problems as a company. Kasi kulang ka ng cash flows. What do you do? You just refinance your debt. Kasi it's free. So, parang, even if you don't have cash flows, pangat yung business mo, buhay ka pa rin. Kasi utang ka ng panibago because of the free money from the Fed. But going forward, wala nang ganun. If you don't have the cash flows, you can't refinance anymore. So, magka, magka ka financial stress ka na kumbaga. And this is what this chart says. Then yung uh, BA rated corporate bond yield spread over the 10 year bond yield. So, kumbaga, let's say, uh, let's say the Fed, uh, the government can borrow 2.8%. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a company, I'm uh, investing in rate ako, how much should I pay? If you additional buy so now, mabawa pa din siya. So may uptick siya, pero still very, very low. So yung sabihin, wala pang financial stress, even though the Fed is already raising rates. So ang sinasabi niya, wala pa tayo sa cycle na yung uh, delikado niya. Is, is this the equivalent? Ito ba yung CDS ni Joel? Yeah, the Paul Swaps? Ito yung, it's like this one? Similar siya. So yung sabihin, wala pang financial stress, even though the Fed is already raising rates. Kasi may kaya pa absorb ng system. Yeah, so of course, US dollar has been rallying. So I would say, parang oversold pound shake. Kasi last year, nawasak ng US dollar. Even though the Fed was tightening. So actually, the outlook for the US dollar is not that bullish. I don't know. I don't know when, so the, when this is going to play out. Kasi, it's suspend down ng ano. Fiscal stimulus daw, so fiscal deficit lalaki. Tapos tax and for reduced taxes. Then, current account deficit din, kasi lakas na economy na. So, dami lang ini-import. So, sabi ng, this is from CLC, sabi ng hihina daw yung dollar, yun yung outlook niya for the second half of the year. So, uh, good for emerging markets. Okay, so, So next is, yun nga, kasi wala na yung Fed eh. So dati, every time may downside yung market, magsasala tayo yung Fed, or magsasala tayo yung ECB. Just to support the market. Kaya yung volatility over the past few years, next to a low target. So now, like what we saw at the start of the year, may mga panawag na, which is going forward normal na yung mga volatility in the market. So, ito yung MSCI world. Okay. So, ito yung return ng MSCI world at the end of the year, in blue. And then this this uh, yellow line, yellow uh, box, 
is the intra-year decline. So to be intra-year volatility, yung last year, pinaka-quiet na year in the past 30 plus years. Walang intra-year decline. But if you look at in history, normal and delay. So, for example, for example, 2004. At one point in the year, down 20% in the market. But at the end of the year, up 31%. So, normal lang yung volatility today. What's abnormal is what happened in the past few years. Na nag-collapse yung volatility. So yung isang nag-suffer this year because of the Fed tightening talaga is the emerging markets. Kasi major beneficiary of free money. Lahat ang pena na punta dito, alam ba? So if you remember 2013, alam ba? Yung spike ng Philippines. So it's not just the Philippines, it's the entire uh, emerging markets. So it's, of course, all correlated to the US dollar. Bakit kasi US dollar yung funding currency? Pag-uutang sila, it's in US dollars kasi free money. So, it's not speculating in emerging markets. That's always the relationship. So, the correlation of US dollar in emerging markets is always the same. So, this is the inverted scale. So, here, 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, emerging markets, bull market, and US dollar is the depreciation from 120 to 18 dollars. So, this is the correlation. Does, does that happen even on on? Because uh, especially recently, so bababa ng interest rates. It, like since two thousand and uh, since the late nineties, all of the interest rates have been dropping from from almost the the, the almost ten double digit ang ano eh seven eight percent ang interest rates at that time eh, di ba? Sa Philippines. No, oh, the, but, but the, even the U.S. continues declining ang ano eh. So every round of market yung yung market, yung level of interest rate that they can increase is decreasing eh, di ba? So all of the highs continue to decrease eh, di ba? So directly, in terms of um, the correlation with the with the dollar, um, is this just happening today or has that happened historically? Historically, pa nang yari ni Shanti. I mean, if you look at the circle. Even before this this Even period, before. na ano na di drop yung ano. I think it's just based on the spread. Eh. Kasi kahit patas yung US interest rates, kasi two, like in three, like four, or like in Philippines is like eight, nine, ten. Hindi ibalak pa rin profit nila. Kaya okay pa rin speculate. Eh. Yeah, so, so the emerging markets, you know, para pa yung chart niya. But I would say, parang nadamay lang yung, yung stocks. Eh. Yung talagang tinamahan actually yung bonds. Eh. So, ito yung chart ng bonds. Eh. Emerging market bonds. So, the break down siya, January pa lang. Eh. Diba? Pero yung stocks, ngayon lang nag-break down. So, I would say, dito talaga yung tinamahan. Which just makes sense naman. Diyan nagsispeculate yung mga tao. Diba? Sige, tinamahan lang yung stocks na kami. For me, this is just profit taking. Kasi last year, umangat ng 33% yung emerging markets. Eh. So even if it replaces 50% of last year, wala lang yun. The big picture. Well, so, uh, this is MSC emerging markets relative to US SP. Diba? And then this is MSC Asia X Japan. So, it's being the performance of the this year. Kasi, lahat ng tao nabili na sa USA. Para nagigigom niya liquidity from the whole world. And then, this is the foreign outflows from Asia. 20 billion US dollars. So, it's the worst since 2011. Pero yung 2008, 70 billion dollars. Okay, so, the real cash flow title is the bond market. I would say this is just a uh, repricing. Ang wala naman panic. Repricing kasi ngayon pataas na yung dollar, pataas na yung interest rates. So lumalabas na yung mga tao sa bond market. So I would say hindi siya panic kasi if you look at the balance sheets ng emerging markets, wala kasi. 
<coughs> and then malakas yung global economy. So yes, mas naging mahal ang utang, pero lumalang rin yung earnings ko. So walang, walang financial stress masyado. Okay. Then, uh, long term, so this is another technology shift. Maliit siya pag sasend na lang, sasend ko na lang sa'yo. Is that yung combined GDP daw ng Asia and Japan, mas malaki na sa buong US this year. So yung forecast is 22 trillion yung economy ng Asia expansification. US this year forecast 20.6 trillion. So parang going forward talaga, this is where the action is emerging markets. So baka, baka someday, yung US na yung correlated sa emerging markets dito pabaliktad. This is the first time it's happened ever. Yeah. First time it's happened ever. Tapos yung growth nominally, double digits, 10%. The U.S. economy growing at parang four percent lang, dominant lang. If you remove inflation, two percent. Yeah. Late July na, ano lang yung sila siya. So this is Asia as a percentage of world GDP. So 1997, ten percent lang. Ngayon, twenty-five percent lang. I think U.S. is. 50 plus percent. So, syempre, it's going to be led by the middle class. You know, basically. So, China, India, pinaka malang increase in the middle class. Almost 1 billion people that pass middle class in the next few years, the next 10 years. Tapos, and Asia Pacific middle class spending will reach 51% of the global from 36% today. So, talagang growth talagang dito. In long-term picture. Okay. Okay. Pero, so, if, if everything looks fine, parang sobrang lakas lahat ng numbers, diba? ang nakita namin is, what is 10 years topping up? Pero parang head and shoulder shift. Well, I need confirmation pa. Pero parang that's what it looks like. Kasi lahat ang data lumala mo sobrang ganda eh. But why is a 10-year? Parang topping out na. Ito yung 10-year yield eh. Diba? So, eh may note sa baba. So yung long term, kasi it reflects the market's expectations eh. For long term, growth and inflation. Diba? So pag tingin talaga ng market, next 3, 5, 10 years, malakas yung growth. Dapat pataas yan. Diba? Or mataas yung inflation. What about Asia? What about parang head and shoulders? Na. So what could what that could mean is that oh nga, oh nga, so kung ganda ng numbers ngayon 2018, maybe it's gonna extend 2019. But beyond that, uh, bearish kami. Ito yung sinasabi ng chart na to. Diba? So it could be that yung uh, economics boost, fiscal reform, uh, stimulus, baka mabilis na boost lang for this year. <coughs> One year, two years after that, wala na, tapos na. Diba? Which for me, makes sense. Kasi yun nga, parang 10 plus years na booming yung US economy. Diba? Tapos unemployment rate, 3.8% na lang. Diba? So you're hitting capacity constraints, hindi ka na makagrow. Diba? So baka hindi sustainable na. Diba? So, itong next chart is the uh, Yield curve. Yield curve is yung pag flat yung yield curve. Ang sabi niya is yung two year is pag pag lumalapit yung distance ito, it's been it's flattening. Pag in two years mas malaki na sa ten year, it's been inverted yield curve. Uh, so historically it has led pag nag invert yung yield curve, yun pala yung na recession. Alam siya hindi hindi instant. So this year 2000, inverted yield curve, then after one year, almost two years, recession, 2007, okay. this is 1990s, that's it yung before 2008-2009, inverted yield curve. So now, inverted yield curve, 
30 basis points when I made this presentation, Korean 26 basis points na lang. Or meron 7. So, ano bang logic niya? Yung two-year kasi, uh, it's uh, related to the Fed tightening. So, pag yung Fed nag-tighten ng rates, tataas yung two-year. So, a lot of funding, a lot of mga utang sa economy is related to the two-year. So, tumataas na, syempre, tightening liquidity yung CBA niya. So, yung CBA, yung tenure naman, diba? as I said, it's reflects the long-term expectations ng growth. Diba? So, pag yung two-year mo pa hanggat, yung CBA, patighten yung mong liquidity, mas meron pang utang, financing. Pag yung tenure mo pa, ba? Kasi yung mababagal yung economy. Kaya, magaling siyang indicator ng recession. But there's also a direct correlation between <coughs> inverted yield curve and euphoria. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean. So, this is, <laughs> what this is saying that it's in the horizon, may parating na recession. For example, yung time, hindi ko lang for, So, we don't see a recession yet. I mean, it could take one, two years, hindi mo alam. But, parang warning sign na siya. Tapos, so, what's happening in the US is that a whole lot of feeding the gas, meaning sovereign damning spending, tax reform, fiscal stimulus, into capacity constraints. I mean, full capacity. Na. So, it's being that as new days. It's the time to tell you fit. It's happening that we are not part of the cycle where. Uh, central banks getting monetary policy rates is difficult. Kasi mamaya, temporary boost lang yung economy. Tapos nag-tighten ka ng sobra. Mas magkailan lang nag-fall off a cliff yung growth ng economy. Hindi patay ka. Kasi yung tighten so much eh. Kaya siya sabi niya, it's hard to get a policy rate at this part of the cycle. Di ba? Kaya siya sabi niya, the risks of a recession is rising in the next 18 to 24 months. But while most players are focused on 2018, we're looking at 2019, 2020. Great value. And long pa siya ng USA. Kasi short siya nito. Europe, Japan. Japan. Oh. Kasi yung reason niya kasi, yung mission yung cover sa Europe. Ano yung kiss So, it's similar to ano? What's happening now to 1999? Parang tingin ko kasi, kasi yung BOJ ECB, hindi makakat ng rates eh. So pag dumating talaga yung slowdown, okay sila. Diba? But it could be... Yeah, I, I don't think they're super bearish, like Ray Dalio is super bearish. I think the problem is it's so hard to unwind positions if you're in the USA. Oh, so what they do is that they hedge their they hedge. positions by shorting Europe and Japan in the event that something does like this happen. Yeah, but hindi naman sabihin ngayon eh. Oh, hindi naman, that's why, that's why. See, he can sit on it for a long time. Yeah. May patience naman siya eh. And so, it's even concerns niya that coming into the next recession, there's a gigantic gap between the rich and the, rich and the poor. That's a sovereign grab inequality. So, this could lead to a lot of tension, political upheavals, if ever dumating yung uh, recession. Then, again, power of central banks to reverse contractions is more limited than they ever have been. Zero rates most of the world. Uh, then thought, this is from Schwab, that we are in this part of the cycle where pag sobrang ganda ng numbers, shit, baka dapat matapat tayo. Kasi 10 plus years na yung expansion eh. Diba? And then when you see this sobrang ganda ng numbers, maybe you have to take it out that, diba eh, natawag na economic cycle. Diba? So if the numbers are so great, we might be closer to the peak. Yeah, so this before the dot com bubble peak. Exactly. So, the model was data. We the GDP, 7.1%. Unemployment rate, 4%. Now it's 3.8%. GDP, clean up. Earnings growth ng SP, 23% up now. Same as today. And your expectations. Okay, so sabi niya, as a leading indicator, the stock market typically does a great job sniffing out important economic and or earnings inflection points. 
that, that's that's why at market tops data typically looks weak. At market bottoms, the data typically looks abysmal. So keep this in mind as you read through this outlook for the remainder of 2008. Can I add? Kasi yung nangyari before 2000, those numbers, kasi March yan, but those numbers are your quarter before. Kung 1990, 1990, 1990, that's why I'm getting the text. Kasi that's the white field. So everyone's relation is spending on technology. Kasi natatanong sila sa... Which is similar now. extra So the last end of the Okay. Uh, so it's, it's not the time yet to be bearish. What the last few slides are saying is that the economic cycle advanced style and the market top may be in the horizon. So what's more likely to happen is if we analyze the emotional cycle of investing, it's like super bullish yung mga tao kasi ganda ng data. Ganda ng data. Earnings going so fast, economy going 3, 4, 5, whatever. So most likely, euphoria mo na. People think forever na yung malakas yung growth na yun. Kasi yun, markets can remain irrational longer than even remain solvent. So, ito, how this article happened. This very billionaire value investor, C. Einhorn, is now 20% year to date. 20% down siya. Ang ginawa niya, yung mga value stocks niya, bumaba lahat. Sinort niya yung tech, talo din siya. So this is the pitfall that we saw in the early days of this cycle. Because it's more likely to be a euphoria. So this is it. 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 A bull market's winning bets typically narrow down to high growth and momentum stocks at the last part of the cycle. So this usually favors growth and momentum claims and has produced profound bubbles in the past. So what's that? Kasi ito ba yung last part ng cycle, doon po pumasok yung mga retail investors eh. Yung expectations nila, so walang bullish eh. So where are they? Bitcoin. Uwi ba rin ang tao yung Bitcoin? Sabi yan, eh last year, umangat lang ng 1,000% eh. Diba? So they're buying stocks because may momentum. Yun yung logic nila ba't nila binibili yung stocks na yan? Kasi sobrang lakas eh. So doon tayo yung part ng cycle na yan. Diba? Na nagsisimula na yung irrationality ng mga tao. In the face of science, na baka parating na yung slow na. So, ito, ganda ito eh. So, so no, uh, dot com bubble, a similar manager, value-oriented manager, had similar difficulties. So, itong Robertson Tiger Management, for 18 years, up siya lang 30% analyst. For 18 years, ha? Ah. Then, dot com bubble, 1999, it was down 20%. Okay. All of the people who have the value So we're in the same scenario. All of the people who have the momentum. Okay, so China, US, power struggle. It's already right? Officially, there are the Alex, the next up in line, 200 billion now. 10% 200 billion. Next up, but it's not in effect. Okay, so, so it's a political drama. The exports of China to the US for the past 20 years up 630%. So, if you want to look at any more supply chain, the machinery, electronics, Textiles, metals, plastic, or rubber. They over like trade deficit on US and China, 400 plus billion dollars. So, as I said, it's more than trade, it's a fight for dominance. So, in Haram, US, 
made in China 2025. So, that's the key component that we're going to So, it's like the ZTE. Di ba, muting na mag-collapse yung ZTE. Kasi, sabi ni Fab, okay, I'm gonna cut you off sa key components na kailangan mo. And the truth is, kailangan pa ng China and US. Yes, grabe yung speed ng advancement ng technology, but they're still way behind the US. Okay. So, the US looks like it has an advantage over China, over everyone else. Kasi lahat ng tao actually may trade surplus sa China. Kasi sobrang laking consumer ng U.S. talaga. Okay, so, ito yung sectors sa China 2025. Ito yung mga economies that are highly reliant on trade. That's uh, Hong Kong. 300% of GDP. Trade yan. Vietnam, 200% plus percent. Singapore. Malaysia din. Taiwan, Korea. Ito ang late eh. Pero ito yung sinasabi niya, if China cuts their imports by a certain percentage, ito yung mawawal ng GDP. Ito yung pinakatama dito, ito yung Taiwan, ito yung Taiwan, Korea dito. So, skip na natin. So, I guess what's giving Trump confidence is that malakas yung US economy, then US stocks ayaw matas. So parang feeling niya, okay, may level ito. Pero yung estimate ng mga economists, wala, do, wala talaga yung effect eh. For China and US eh. So sabi niya, even if you put tariff on the entire trade deficit, 400 plus billion, tataas, ng, tataas yung prices ng US, but consumers pay. May 40 basis points lang. Tapos yung mga walang GDP sa China, it's only 0.4 to 0.6% ng mga walang. Kaya yeah, kasi ito, talagang ayaw mo matas ng US. Uh, on emerging markets, of course, this is uh, uncertainty on the growth. And then I guess what we should watch out for is yung, actually yung China down 22%. Then if you look at the currency ng China, so again, devaluing ng malaki. So this time, parang hindi masyado, masyado pinapansin. But before, di ba yung August 2015? Nag-devalue yung China, nag-collapse halos lahat eh. I guess kasi malakas yung growth ngayon eh. Kaya hindi masyado pinapansin ko eh. Tapos ito. Okay, so, uh, Philippines. So, this, this, this is a summary. So, we're still bullish. Kasi eh, uh, we've been doing fast in the past 7 years. Investment driven cycle. And then yung build, 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 parang na-execute na eh. So if you look at government spending for a the year, it's na increase more than 25%. So, yes, uh, mas likely na, na this will further boost the economy uh, going forward. Okay. Pero, on the stock market naman, we're a little less bullish this year. Uh, simply because, yung dating mga sell-offs is just irrational. Irrational meaning, Yung fundamentals locally, walang problema. Malakas yung GDP growth. 10 year ng Philippines, 3-4%, so walang baba lang. So there was no way to go but the stock market. The earnings, malakas pa rin. So every time binayantahan, it was only because of something happening abroad. Just nadama yung Philippines. So 2013 was taper tantrums, down 22%. Pero ang bilis mong bounce, so new high na. So August 2015, yung China hard landing, ng collapse in commodities. So, it's down 25%. So, nabilis mong bounce din. 2016 was yung Trump, nanalo si Trump. Protectionist policies daw. So, nalaglag yung 19%. Pero still, bumalik agad. So, if you look at ano yung range ng P is 16 to 20. But remember, during this time, the 10-year yield of the Philippines was between 3 and 4%. Now, the 10-year of the Philippines is average 6.4% for the first five, six months of the year. So it's 50% higher than before. So what happens is the PE of the Philippines is going to be derating. Instead of the average of the past years, 18, 
Ngayon, baka average, ngayon na, 15, 16, ganyan. Diba? Even 14. Pero tingin ko, somewhere around 15 to 16. So, nagkaroon ng D-rating. Hindi siya panic selling. Hindi siya panic selling. is simply yung market nag-compute. Hmm, 10 year mo, 6 point something na eh. So, ano dapat yung fair value? Diba? Kaya siya, binentahan na ganyan. Pero, we don't expect a large bounce. Kasi yun nga, it's a repricing. May nagbago sa fundamentals ng stock market. So, ano yung mga nagbago? So, externally, yan. Fed rate hike. Okay. May trade wars. Pero hindi naman siya lang sa aming Philippines. I guess, pero sentiment lang. And then locally, ito yung problema talaga. We're also heading in a part of the cycle where high growth, high inflation. Para yung US. So definitely, kailangan ng raise ng rates. Yung dating 10 year, 3, 4, hindi, parang posible na yan. 90% chance is going to be between 6 and 7 in the next few years. Pero, buo ba na yung stock market? I think it's a good entry point na. Pero parang wala mo siya ng upside recently. And then, if you look at earnings, the estimate this year is 12%. First quarter, 5.9% line earnings. So it's way, way below the consensus expectations. Kasi it may cause pressure sa taas yung inflation kasi. Okay, so itong slide, kaya pa rin niya is uh, investments to GDP. So 2011 was only 19% of GDP. Yes. 25% of GDP. Ano ba yung isang sign investment driven? If you look at bank lending here, bank lending, ito na. Ito yung bank lending. Loan growth, ito yung GDP growth. So it's going at double GDP growth. So it's being able to lever up in the economy. Diba? Kasi yung GDP, it's like yung parang revenues ng company yan. Diba? So, it's been deliver every balance sheet ng mga tao. So, it's year year? year? So, but if you look at it, if you look at all the data, parang may legs pa yung investment boom ng Philippines. So, ang tinitingnan dito is yung banking system. Yung loan to deposit ng banks is only 73% lang. So, meaning for every peso na meron sa banking system, 73 cents na yung napahirap. So, that's very low. Usually, pag 90 plus na, sabi, ubus na yung, ubus na yung pera. Diba? Nagamit na. But now, it's only 0.73. And then, yung BSP, nagkakat pa ng reserve ratio. Yung reserve ratio is the part of deposits that you, you have to keep at the BSP. Tatago niya lang. Tatago niya yung liquidity. Diba? So, gusto niya gawin single digits lang. From 18% today. Yeah, so, okay. Infra spending yan, up 25%. The target of the government is 6% of GDP. We're support 4.5% last year. So, triple A, uh, long term, so ng beneficial niya. Parang tataas yung potential growth rate ng Philippines. Kasi people are gonna be more productive. Less traffic. Maganyan. Pero, uh, short term, makakadagdag siya sa inflation. Makakadagdag siya sa inflation. Kasi, oh, sige, how long does it take to build a bridge? How long does it take to build a power plant? So, what tagal ito? So, yung capacity ng economy, hindi ka lang mag-i-increase. Pero yung spending, grabe yung spending. So, makakadagdag siya sa inflation ni short term. Kaya talaga yung policy rate, policy ng BSV, pataas na yan. Okay. So, speaking of that, ito yung, yung inflation natin, yung pasipa na siya. Yung average. Inflation is average 4.3% from January to June. Yung target ng BSP between 2 and 4. 
ito yung policy ng PSP, 3.5%. So if you subtract that, 3.5% minus 4.3% inflation, negative yung policy ng Central Bank. So if you still at this point, parang nakaka-inflation, advance na economic cycle, kaya yung policy mo, negative pa rin. So it's been extremely stimulative ko pa rin. Eh, syempre natakot yung market. Wait and see. Tapos, yung latest data, 5.2%. So parang, kasi in-expect na lang tao pa, pa-taper off the inflation. Diba? Pati yung latest data, nung bulagala, parang 5.2 siya. So the main culprit is, of course, oil oil prices. I think oil year on year up 60 plus percent. But what what I saw was, even if you remove oil, even if you remove food prices, na super volatile, your core inflation still increased from 3.2 to 4.3. So talaga ng main inflation and pressure story. So what's happening here is that yung mga businesses are passing on the higher oil price pinapasa na sa consumers. Kaya parang most likely, second half of the year, mga feed pala natin yung high inflation. Okay. Pero, okay. Tapos, yung isa pang important, kasi, you have to follow what the US is doing. So, tingnan mo ito. So, this is the Philippine policy rate since 2015. December 2015, it started to increase yung Fed. And from 0 to 2. 4 to 3.5. Nag-loosen pa tayo at the same, at the same time. Diba? Kaya hindi mo ma-blame, parang lumalabas yung mga tao. Lumalabas yung mga foreign. Parang not enough in return eh. Kasi nagtataas yung Fed naman eh. Rates eh. Tapos Philippines, let's say, o oh, nga. Let's say, yeah, baban. 5%. Yung inflation mo, 5 na eh. So parang, at ako dito, halis lang ako. So, as an emerging market, very small capital markets and high foreign participation, pwede sa lumabas eh, anytime eh. So you have to make them, you have to, uh, kailangan may incentive for them to stay. So, ito yung, ito yung peso this year, minus 6.4%. So, of course, that's a reason yung high inflation. Although, although we think yung inflation going forward, pawala na yan. Kasi, kaya ba mag-increase ulit ng 50% yung wage? Excuse me. From 74 to 120. Or 130, 140. Ang malabo na eh. So most likely, next year, pawala na yung effects na oil. Then yung BSP, gumagalaw na eh. So, yung reason na lang nakikita namin ba, mahina yung peso is the current amount deficit. Na from consistently positive in 2015-2015, ngayon, negative 1%. Yung forecast for this year. Next year, negative 1.8% na. So, palaki siya. So, dito, hindi naman siya super alarming. But what it says to me is that from a very strong peso past few years, mag-a-adjust yung peso. Mag-a-adjust yung peso. To reflect this new dynamic. Kasi, ano ba yung isipin ng current out, sir? Deficit. Mas malaki yung ini-import mo kaysa yung ini-export mo. So, yung pera, palabas. Palabas yung pera. Kaya yung peso, hindi na. Okay, so, late on chart, pero uh, this is the peso versus lahat ng neighbors natin over the past 10 years. Peso lang yung hindi nag-devalue. Over the past 10 years, the peso only depreciated 17%. But over the same time, yung Indian rupee depreciated 60 plus percent. Indonesian rupee depreciated 60 percent. In Vietnam, dong depreciated 36 percent. Malaysian ringgit depreciated 24%. Tapos tayo, 17 lang. So parang, 
hindi competitive yung peso, then you have this changing dynamic na pa-correct ang deficit na tayo. So, mag-a-adjust talaga yung peso. So, until medyo malapit na siya sa neighbors niya. Okay. So, ito yung cost ng yung deficit natin. Surplus, correct ang surplus lang. Negative na. So, yung trend niya, wala pa. So, expectation of peso, a weekend pa. So, what's driving the surplus? Ang deficit. So, that then, import growth natin average 6.1% lang. Now, it's 20% growth yung average ng imports. So, what's driving it is the uh, investments. So, itong chart na to, pinaparoy niya investment growth, tapos ito pinaparoy na current account. So, it's highly correlated siya. Yeah. Okay. Investment, development growth, investment sa GDP, umangan, current account surplus mo ako. So, kasi we're importing a lot of uh, capital goods. So, walang nangyari, parang magiging persistent yung current account deficit natin. But that in itself, hindi siya solid bearish. Yung pangit pag, ano eh, malaki yung current account deficit, maybe 2 to 3 percent. And then you're importing, kasi gusto mo ba din ng TV? Gusto mo ba din ng iPhone? Sayang sa pera daw. Kasi consumption lang siya. So, pangit siya. In Philippines, we're importing for investment. So, investment niyo, someday maging productive. Someday, maging mas malaking growth ng Philippines. Tapos ito. So, ito so, yung Indonesia. So, yung Indonesia, from positive current out surplus, naging negative P. Negative P. Diba? Tapos pag nilipo, why? Diba? Because oil, in 2013, 14, 15, was spiking, 100 plus. And then, yung Indonesia, meron ng oil subsidy oil subsidy. But it's true how wasteful it was. The oil subsidy was bigger than what they were spending on infrastructure. Yung parang free money lang, free, free money siya. So wasteful siya. So, so this made the Rupiah very vulnerable. Kasi laging palabas yung pera eh. And then when something happens sa global markets, boom, magpapanig yung mga tao. Capital outflows pangyayari ko. So what happened in Indonesia, 2013, paper tantrums. So what do you want to The central bank was forced to raise interest rates to defend the currency from 5.75 to 7.75 in policy rate in a span of one and a half years. So shit, like, this is so shit, my, 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 from 6% average, to 5. But even if the central bank defended the currency, wala na eh, papanik na yung mga tao eh. Diba? The rupiah is still depreciated 41%. 41% depreciation. Stock market go by 27%. Diba? So if you combine that yung currency, Sa stock market, dollar pays go ba ng 49% yung stock market. So until today, dollar pays, di pa siya new high. All time low na ba? Rupiah. So that's for him. 14,300. All time low na eh. Oh, alright. So ito yung pangay talaga pag current na akong deficit. Yung currency mo maging sensitive. If ever something happens, abroad, matatawad yung foreign lalabas yan. Okay. But luckily for the Philippines, okay, hindi naman alarming. So, ang problema kasi ng Indonesia, yung maraming bonds nila, foreign may hawak eh. So, at yung Indonesia, 60% of their bonds was owned by foreigners. So, if something happens, nalabas talaga yan. Diba kaya grabe yung capital outflows? Philippines, 20% lang, 25% of bonds are owned by foreign. Kaya hindi kasi yung violent yung outflows, if ever. And then, yung reserves natin actually 6-year low na. But relative to our 
external financing needs. Ang sabi niyan, kailangan ko ng pera from abroad. Kunti lang yung pangailangan natin. We can get our money in the Philippines. So, mas less sensitive ka sa capital outflows. Yun yung sabi niya. I think one hundred fifty-one minutes. Per hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, this chart, this red is the ten-year, but it's inverse. Let me look at it. So, to find the correlation. So, rising rates mean lower PE multiples. So that's what we're seeing now. So, if we look at the two thousand ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen super bull market in Philippines, say the ten-year, na rin, from eight. Percent, naging 2.8 percent at the low. 2.8 percent na hindi sa nasa. So yung PE ng Philippines from 13 naging 21. That's an increase of 50 percent. Yeah, de ba? Kasi yung yung expected return na sa market, expected return ng market. Depende sa dividend yield. Dividend yield plus earnings growth plus change in PE. Ito yung equation nyo. So, tumakas yung PE ng 50% that time. So, even if, kasi pag umangat yung earnings 10% lang, yung total angat ng market estimated. 60 plus percent. So, PE lahat. Bakit yung pabaligtad na siya? Diba? So, dito, ayan, the, the 10 year was so average 4 percent. Okay, average PE ng market, 18. So, ngayon, 10 year, ito na sa 6 something na eh. So, if you look at the PE, actually, hindi ba siya masyadong buha ko ba eh? Ay, buha ba na malaki? 21 to eh. So this is 16.5. So that's certainly said, more value than that. So this is the reason why the entire market is quite present. It's not panic selling. It's a straightforward calculation that you can do in your calculator. So when they come, that's it. From 6.4 percent, the one of 10 years. Ano dapat yung PE? If it's 1 divided by 6.4 So dapat 15.6 Which is roughly equal to today So So Ano yung kailangan yung makita? We need to see So yung PE mo Pao ba yung PE? Kailangan ito pataas Para tumaas yung market so problema, miss expectations in first quarter by a mile. It's estimate 12 percent, 2018. But the first quarter was only 5.9 percent. That is a cost inflation in, the end. Parang it's a squeeze for the margins second quarter. So, kailangan natin abangan yung mga second, third, fourth quarter earning season. So our estimate is really baka last quarter of the year or first half of next year para sumipan ulit yung earnings uh, so that that was ano roll over kasi yung inflation is primarily because of oil at yung BSP ng tataas na rates eh. so most likely next year wala na yung cost inflation tapos napasa na yung higher costs so dapat tala ka earnings and actually the estimate the next year is also 12% consensus lower base consensus lower base Thank you. Okay, I'm talaga. It's Jason. Stop picks on your next next part. Then the sell off. Fifty percent. The sell off in the ten year. I mean, on the bond. Because the bond market, because it's malaki, right? Oh, so usually the first one to liquidate is always the bond market, not the equity market. So, do you think that? What's happening today, like six and a half percent, is like an exact is more exaggerated than what's happening on the equity market. Equality. 
mean, hindi ko alam yung volatility ng bond market. Eh. But I would say malaki yan, di ba? So malaki yung bond six and a half, ah. Oh, I mean, malaki. four and a half to six and a half. Ano may effect sa price nun? Hindi ko kasi super shot yung gamay yung volatility ng bond market, eh. <laughs> pero, pero malaki yan, di ba? Any more questions? I just to emphasize lang, eh. I mean, uh, when we, we decided on this one, so basically what, what the difference is, usually the sharp rallies that you see in 13, 15, 16, we just explained because of this and everything, what's happening is more rational. So that's why when it's going down, what's happening, we think is going to happen is a rounding bottom, rather than your V-shape or your square root set. So what happens is a lot of value in its point. A lot of value is already, so I think book book is the market in general. So you have your AGI, the press now, uh, your casinos, some of your banks like Metrobank, uh, MPI, you know what I'm doing. Like I think that's the reason why parang we don't see like, parang capitulate na kasi most of it. Eh. So parang mga laway na nandoy. But we don't think that what's gonna happen is like a V-shaped rally. We think it's gonna still take time. Right? So I think it's not for us to deploy a lot today. Right? I think it will give you, this market will give you your chance. But it cannot be too bearish also. So I think for the traders, if you're informing your team, I think, right? I think you can still trade, but just trade by the during these times. If your if your outlook say as a local euphoria and talkish and the it's a local rounding bottom, eh? So what will be the outlook of the local after two to three years if you're expecting a top in the US? Uh sure, okay, most likely tatama din yung Philippines. Pero baka baka same like 2008. Uh, so, it's a V. So, it's a V. So, diba? after the big leg, it's a V. No, no, no. It's going to be a rounding ball, though. Yeah, yeah. You'll probably have your euphoria. Ah, okay, that's right. Uh, uh, that's a so fast recovery. That's a fast recovery. I mean, after that, after that. If, if we ever lose here, euphoria. It's not going to be a V. But I think expectation is that it's just these rallies in between will probably be, be small. And I even think the declines, let's say, like, for Bauba, let's say, like, resistance, Bauba, I think. On the individual issues, you will be involved in the market. What's going to happen is that the ones that will be affected the most probably is your AC, SM, SM Prime. Because they are actually three of them are very expensive compared to all the individual issues because they're what, 40%, 50% of that index. Right? But if you factor in the larger discount rates, so it's fair to us right now. Actually, we don't want to go to see if it's good. Discovery. Yeah, I think everybody in general. I, I think everybody's well because it's too early for you to call now. Oh, the win at a six percent now, but because it could be that their bond market is also irrationally so. So that's why I think a lot of people are still hesitant to see. But oh, what's the right number? Because if you adjust it, let's say like hundred basis points, technically from four to five, not right? And technically, the overshoot now, right? Because you have your initial panic selling, and yeah, like irrational then um, it could be that their bond market is also 10 years, also irrationally sold right now. Yeah. So that's why I think um, temporarily you probably see it be released on the bond market. I think that's the first thing that we should So we should be buying the bond market today? That's, that's why I asked that, right? Because it's six and a half percent, seven percent on 10 years, I think. Yeah, well, fair. Very, 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 very competitive. Very competitive. Right? Very competitive. Right? Very competitive. Right? But I, I think what's bigger word is like, I think my Indonesia, my Indonesia, but I have foreign ownership. Right? I think it's more difficult to buy it. It's more difficult to buy it. But inflation is only 3%. It's only 3%. It's only 3%. It's only 3%. Any more questions? I think you made a good point on so what's happening now is that we're having a deficit because of spending. Right? As opposed to Indonesia that always had a deficit because of subsidies. Yeah. Right? That's a big difference also. Right? What big difference? No, the, the challenge really, I think, is that with all this deficit and everything, on all this spending, is there going to be a highway five years from now? Wait a minute. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? The subway problem. The highway. The skyway. I can see the subway. 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 Sorry, man, I'm so tight. 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 I'